Well, welcome everybody. We're having Dr. Ota here from uh, Japan, from Nippon Medical University, where he researched the molecular hydrogen. Uh, here we're with the Molecular Hydrogen Foundation, of which I'm the executive director, and we are a science-based nonprofit that's focused on advancing the research, awareness, and education of hydrogen as a therapeutic medical gas. And we have the pioneering researcher here, Dr. Ota, who was responsible for publishing the 2007 Nature Medicine publication that showed hydrogen has beneficial effects. And since then, the research has grown quite rapidly. So, Dr. Ota, a pleasure to have you here with us today. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, you, you're, you researched there at the Nippon Medical School. Yeah. I, I know you recently retired. Your expertise is in the mitochondria and things. Perhaps you could share with our viewers a little bit about your background and how you got involved in the hydrogen research. Okay, so, uh, as my background, I spent uh, 40 years for the mitochondria research, especially on uh, mitochondria medicine. I found the uh, 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 mutant genes of the mitochondrial DNA that cause mitochondrial disease. So I was interested in the, how mitochondria contribute to our health. And then we found the mitochondria generate a reactive oxygen species that damage our cells and the body. Uh, but uh, we also we found the uh, Reactor oxygen, some of the reactor oxygen has a beneficial effect. So it is so difficult if we destroy all the reactor oxygen species, it's not so good. Uh, so uh, I'm wondering whether the we can um, treat our reactor oxygen species. That is my background. And then we found that hydrogen can remove the some of the hydroxyl uh, reactive oxygen species, uh, such as uh, hydroxyl radicals. And then um, uh, developed uh, uh, so, many, uh, so many hydrogen effects afterwards. Yeah. Okay, so, you, so your, your expertise is in the mitochondria. Yeah. You found that mitochondria produce reactive oxygen species, yeah. which are very damaging to the body, mm -hmm. but some of them are actually good for us, mm -hmm. so we don't want to neutralize all of them. Mm -hmm. And so your, your hope or your goal was to find some way to, to neutralize only the bad free radicals, only yeah. the bad reactive oxygen oh, yeah. species, and then you came across hydrogen. Yeah. And, and you started to find that, hey, this is a selective antioxidant. Mm -hmm. yeah. It only scavenges the bad ones, like the okay. hydroxyl radical. Okay. Uh, but the, the story is not so simple. Okay. Because uh, hydrogen regulates uh, uh, um, signal transduction and also many gene expression. Yeah, I was so, going to yeah. ask you about yeah, this yeah. because, you know, just by saying hydrogen can scavenge hydroxyl radicals, mm -hmm. we know this cannot explain all the benefits of hydrogen. Yes, so that's right. I know you published some papers in the scientific reports yeah. and, and the and signal transduction and the changes in gene expression. Yeah. So perhaps you can talk a little bit about this. Okay, so I th in, in the initial stage, initial stage, I was interested in the acute disease uh, such as um, cerebral infarction or the cardiac infarction. And that time, in, so hydrogen is effective in a short time, uh, 10 minutes or uh, 20 minutes. Is to, uh, but uh, for the, uh, later, we found that drinking hydrogen water is effective, sometimes more effective than uh, inhalation of hydrogen gas. So uh, for me, it is curious and takes uh, uh, the, con the effect was continued for a long time, at least one day or so. So, and also uh, we found the hydrogen uh, release so rapidly. So, even without hydrogen, the effect continued for a long time. So, it is curious. So, I've, I look at the uh, effect uh, uh, similar transaction and gene expression. That is my thinking. Okay, yeah, so, okay, so you started to see that hydrogen could be effective in the acute phase due to this maybe hydroxyl radical scavenging. Yeah. 
But then you saw it's actually effective, like drinking hydrogen rich water in a more of a chronic stage when all the hydrogen gas is really mm. gone and out of the body. Yeah, it still has it's, this residual or beneficial yeah. effect. Yeah. So you think, okay, maybe we're altering gene expression or something. Mm. And, and that's what prompted you to start the studies in signal transduction. Okay. And also, I would say that at first, I want to spend the time to find the effect of hydrogen gas. At first, okay. Uh, but actually, the effect of the drinking hydrogen water is better than inhalation of hydrogen gas in animal experiment. Oh, so you mean you want to just see the effect of hydrogen gas, like inhalation, mm. and then you later found that actually drinking hydrogen-rich water is often more effective. Yes, that's right. And so you're like, well, this is very strange. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay. So I spend a lot of money for the. Uh, make uh, equipment for hydrogen gas, but it was in vain, <laughs> so okay. I lost a lot of money <laughs> for research. And so I spent a lot of time uh, for the research of hydrogen gas, uh, hydrogen water. Uh, so it, for me, and in the, at that time, um, it, is very, it was very curious. So yeah. when, when did you start researching the hydrogen gas? When, when did you first come across this concept and started actually doing the research? Okay, uh, I must say that uh, and for research, uh, the uh, research for hydrogen gas and hydrogen water is parallel okay. at the time. But for the publication, we start the publication uh, for inhalation of hydrogen gas. And then later we publish a paper on hydrogen water. But actually, we performed the experiment at the same time. So, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, because uh, I thought that the uh, editor or the reviewer feel cu more curious on the hydrogen water. So, at first, we published uh, three papers on the inhalation of hydrogen gas and then start the publication on hydrogen water. That is my story. So, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, yeah. It, it's, very, it's very curious. Let's, let's talk about this, the hydrogen gas concept, mm. because when you talk to other scientists, mm. people who have background in biochemistry mm. or biology, mm. for example, we understand hydrogen is rather biologically inert, if you will. Yeah, yeah, it should, that's right. You would think it would have no effect. So it's very curious that this mm. hydrogen, because hydrogen, right, it's, it's nonpolar, it's neutral, it's not an mm. ion. Mm. So why would hydrogen gas have an effect? So I, my question is, uh, how, how have you uh, been received by the other scientific community when you try to publish your results or uh, try to explain a hydrogen has this, this medical effect? So, I think that still it is difficult to explain all of them. Uh, but uh, um, because I spent uh, 40 years for mitochondria research, it is easy to treat mitochondria and react to oxygen species. So, I could uh, detect uh, various kinds of react to species easily. So, uh, it is uh, Good, cho good choice that uh, it was a good choice to see the reactive oxygen species um, after the treatment with uh, uh, hydrogen. Right, yeah. right. So if the, it, is, it was very difficult to detect the reactive oxygen species, I couldn't do it. Okay, yeah, okay. Just so only one day is sufficient to detect the uh, effect of hydrogen. So, so because of your expertise in mitochondrial research and detecting ROS, mm. you could easily show the yeah. effects of hydrogen. Yes, that's so right. So even though you may not have been able to explain it, or even now we, mm. we can't really explain exactly yeah. what's going on, we clearly see the observations. Yes, yes, yeah. And would you agree that's common with a lot of pharmacology these days, that a lot of times we, we have chemotherapeutic agents that mm. have a beneficial or, or a therapeutic effect, but we don't know the exact mechanism yeah. of how it works. Yeah. So in some ways that's kind of similar to hydrogen. 
mm. that we don't know all the exact intrinsic details mm. of the mechanism mm. of how hygiene works. Yeah. Similarly, there are many pharmaceuticals and drugs that we don't know the exact yeah, yeah, yeah. mechanism yeah, either. Yeah. So, and they, so it, it was very difficult to find the mechanisms. Yeah. So I was thinking uh, for five years and at the, uh, one day I um, thought uh, that is a free radical reactor uh, free radical chain reaction should be important. Otherwise, hydrogen is inert and inactive, and uh, hydrogen should not be effective. Right, mm. right. Yeah. Uh, but uh, um, I could not exclude other possibilities. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, I think this is one of the mechanisms. One of the mechanisms. Yeah. I, I think this is an important point because when you look at hydrogen gas, for example, if you drink mm. a hydrogen saturated water, the concentration mm. at, at saturation is mm. about 0 0.8 millimolar mm. or 1.6 ppm, which is about 1.6 milligrams per liter. And if you were to drink a, a full liter of water, that can then be diluted mm. to the rest of the body, about 40 mm. liters of water in the human body. So the concentration of hydrogen is very small. small. The amount of hydrogen is very small. Uh, but uh, I think it's, it's not so small. Okay. Because uh, after the drinking hydrogen water, the concentrate reach about uh, 10 micromolar. Yes. Okay. Uh, hydrogen is uh, very light. So if we consider the uh, weight of hydrogen, that is uh, very small. Uh, but uh, uh, if we consider the uh, molar, Molar or mass. the number, uh, number, number of molecules, molecules it, it is uh, not so uh, small. I, I'm uh, glad that you brought that up. This is a critical point. People see hydrogen, there's only 1.6 milligrams of hydrogen in a saturated mm. liter of water, which, oh, this is not very much. Mm. But it's because it's so light. Mm. Hyd the molar mass of hydrogen is only 2 grams per mole, mm. but vitamin C is about 176 mm. grams per mole. Mm. So actually, if you compare the amount of molecules of hydrogen gas that are saturated in one liter of water to the amount of molecules mm. of vitamin C in 100 milligrams of vitamin C, mm. you actually find there are a lot more molecules of hydrogen gas in one liter that contains 1.6 ppm than there are molecules of vitamin C in a 100 milligram dose of yeah. vitamin C. Yeah, so that's right. it actually yes. is quite a bit, yeah. right? Uh, that, that's a very good point. We have to look at the, the moles to moles or molecules yeah. to molecules. We can't consider the weight. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, as, as I told you that uh, um, hydrogen constant lead to a uh, 10 micromolar. Yeah, but 10, 10 micromolar micro is uh, not so uh, It's not so much. The, 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 the cytokines in yeah. our body or other, or the other drugs, some of them are on the, on the nanomolar range. Yeah, that's right. And so it still yeah, has an effect. Yeah. So we can still have an effect, even though people may say the concentration may be low, right? Yeah. But perhaps even more important than trying to show that the concentration is, is equivalent to other mm. things is the fact that we have the observational studies. We mm. have animal studies, cell mm. studies at the this, at this similar concentration, mm. right? And, and human studies showing the, these beneficial effects. Yeah. So going back to the the early publication in Nature Medicine, right? Mm. I just want to touch on this a little bit more because uh, their uh, science, scientists would be rather skeptical again about mm. hydrogen scavenging hydroxyl radicals mm. because the rate constants are quite mm. low. Uh, the amount of hydrogen gas mm. in the body relative to say glutathione mm. or other uh, nucleophilic mm. you know, uh, reducing yeah. agents is a mm. lot lower. But this gene expression mm. that you brought up with the modifying the lipid propagation, yeah. um, I, I know that this is the mechanism to explain, for example, uh, an anti-obesity effect. Mm. It can increase uh, FGF21, mm. fibroblast growth factor mm. 21, so that leads to a lot of benefits. But Dr. Oja, perhaps you could just explain a little bit more on your study on how you were able to show in a, in a cell-free culture Right? Yeah, yeah. The how hydrogen could actually, with the 4-HNE, the 4-hydroxynonenol, and, and have those changes to actually increase things like PGC1-alpha, mm. FGF21, leading yeah. to this uh, anti-obesity yeah. effect. And also, and, uh, uh, everybody believes the hydrogen in that, and uh, especially at lower concentration. But I found the 
only 1% of hydrogen gas it disturbs the uh, free radical chain reaction. So, well, which is which? One percent is about a, uh, is a little bit is similar to drinking. Yes, yes, exactly. water. Yes, so yes. that's an important comparison. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. And one percent of hydrogen gas um, and leads uh, um, about uh, sixteen uh, eight uh, eight micromolar of eight micromolar hydrogen. So that is uh, comparable. Yes. So, and usually uh, hydrogen is inert, but uh, during the free radical chain reaction, even the lower concentration of hydrogen disturbs the reaction in cell free system yeah. and also in cultured system. Yeah. Th this is important uh, because he's really showing the um, actual mechanism in a cell free system taking. A lipid, some basically some fats of the cell membrane, put them in a cell-free system, and showing that when you add hydrogen gas to the to the system, you actually prevent some of the uh, oxidation, some of the peroxidation cascade that occurs, because you start producing this this molecule. It's a, it's a byproduct, 4 hydroxynonenol. Yeah. What what is the effect of 4 hydroxynonenol? I have a this starts signaling for the um, act uh, phosphorylation. It is a scientific term, but uh, a signal trap function uh, regulates uh, phosphorylation of various kinds of uh, enzymes. So, and uh, hydroxyl non um, regulate uh, phosphorylation of the, some kinase on the other. Uh, and transcriptional factors. Okay, and then and then this and ends then, up leading yeah. to the FGF twenty one yeah. and and the anti obesity effects and things, right? It, this is because what happens is four hydroxynonenol is this is this byproduct from oxidation, and it basically uh, it forms adducts or it basically hugs proteins and says you're not going anywhere, and prevents them from acting on the genes. And when when you administer hydrogen gas, it prevents the increase of four hydroxynonenol. And that in turn leads to the uh, upregulation of these of these genes, or it kind of rescues their effect, so it can keep those levels high. Yeah. So this le leads to per another increase of, in PGC one alpha. Yeah. What are some of the benefits of having an increase in PGC one alpha? Oh yeah, PGC one alpha has a multiple uh, function. So um, so hydrogen increase or decrease of PGC one alpha. The PGC1 alpha uh, shows uh, a lot of function, so that's why hydrogen has a uh, multiple function. Well, what are some of the functions? Uh, for example, a PGC1 alpha uh, regulates uh, gene, uh, energy metabolism and also increase mitochondria. Right, because yeah. it's a marker of mitochondrial biogenesis. So in other words, we have more mitochondria. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. So by having more PGC1 mm -hmm. alpha, we're we're seeing a, an indicator of more mitochondria. So we have a better power supply to our body. So how does this relate to maybe fatigue or to various diseases or even exercise? Yeah, and uh, so and um, if the hydrogen uh, increase uh, energy metabolism. And uh, that prevents metabolic syndrome. Okay, prevents uh, metabolic syndrome, yeah. which is like yeah. the obesity, high cholesterol, yeah. high fat, hypertension. Yeah. So so many. So diseases. so many different functions, because really that is one of the you know as you sit back as a scientist and you hear that hydrogen is able to help with this disease, this disease, this disease, mm -hmm. this disease. Uh, we're pretty much at about a hundred and seventy different disease models. Yes, that's right. Where hydrogen has shown yeah. to have this effect. Yeah. It, it's very strange. It, it's it's almost a, a red flag. Something yeah. isn't right. Mm. But but you're 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 saying here, it's really not so complicated because mm. when you see that hygiene affects uh, PGC one alpha. Yes, that's right. And uh, another pathway, the uh, hydrogen down regulation of uh, NFAT, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, transcriptional factor. In this case, down regulation. Okay, uh, for the PGC1 alpha, hydrogen upregulates. So, so okay, sometimes okay. upregulate and sometimes downregulate. 
Okay, this is yeah. this is a critical point. I want to get back to this. I want to talk about end fat just a little bit more. Um, so, so as as a transcription factor like PGC one alpha, that goes in, that basically they go a transcription factor goes into the nucleus. It binds to the DNA and causes the DNA to make more proteins and and cause these different benefits. What is the effect of end fat? When end fat is activated, yeah. what are the consequences? And end fat is contribute to regulation of inflammatory uh, cytokine. Okay, inflammatory yeah, diseases, yes, the cytokines yeah, yeah. that cause the yeah. like swelling or pain yeah, or yeah, diseases. Yeah. So, and so, um, at least I show the two pathways for the inflammation and the energy metabolism. Uh, which is one yeah. N fat and yeah. the other PGC one yeah. alpha. Uh, but uh, hydrogen has more multiple function. So right. Uh, there must be uh, another another <laughs> and mechanism. Pathway, yeah. So okay, so you batch your point where you said sometimes hydrogen can upregulate things and sometimes mm. hydrogen can downregulate yeah. things. This is also very very curious, very no, strange. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like hydrogen has a a mind of its own. It knows yeah. what to do. It, can, yeah. it upregulates the good stuff, downregulates the bad stuff. Mm. But it's too small to have a, a, its own brain, right? Oh, yeah, brain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, are, do you see other things where hydrogen is able to upregulate uh, other transcription factors or other areas oh, or downregulate yeah. other things? And uh, uh, Matsumoto and the Nodas group showed the increase of ghrelin, uh, which is a kind of a hormone uh, from stomach. Right, Th so, this is Dr. Mami Noda, she's also one of our MHF advisors. She was a researcher at Rockefeller University and, and she's there at Kyushu University and she found that oral consumption of hydrogen-rich water mm -hmm. induced gastric ghrelin secretion. Mm -hmm. So, ghrelin, wh where does that come from? Come from stomach. From the stomach. So, so if we drink hydrogen water, hydrogen in, uh, increased uh, and concentration of the stomach easily. Yeah, the ghrelin, yeah. the ghrelin secretion. So, and what are some of the benefits of, of having an increased amount of ghrelin? Uh, ghrelin leads to brain oh. and protects the uh, neuro, new to, uh, neural cells. Okay, so it has mm -hmm. neurological benefits mm -hmm. as well as I know some anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. effects. Yeah. Um, actually, so ghrelin is, is considered the hunger hormone. So uh, many of the people these days are familiar with the intermittent fasting mm -hmm. or the benefits of fasting or mm -hmm. caloric restriction, right? And perhaps some of those benefits of this, this caloric restriction are mediated by increased gastric mm. ghrelin production. Mm. So uh, it's interesting because it seems that hydrogen seems to mimic mm. some of the same effects as fasting, some of the same effects as caloric yeah, restriction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you also published a paper in the Journal of Obesity, mm. uh, where you well, that's yeah, the one yeah. with the FGF21, uh, mm, yeah. right? Uh, can you explain some of some of those effects and and some of the benefits that you saw in that publication? Okay, so um, um, at first, uh, uh, hydrogen involved in uh, oxidative stress at first. At first, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, oxidative okay. stress. So, but uh, um, and also hydrogen is effective on energy metabolism. Right, but, so, but yeah, increasing yeah, PGC1 yeah, alpha, yeah. more mitochondria. Yeah, yeah. At that time, we couldn't find the effect of uh, PGC alpha. At oh, first, okay. okay. So I found a, a phenomenon uh, for the energy metabolism uh, because uh, when we applied hydrogen water to DB DB mice, uh, that cannot uh, that mouse cannot regulate the eating. So, so it's, it's, it's a genetic much. mutation, right? Yeah. The mice had a genetic mutation; they cannot regulate how much food they were mm -hmm. they were taking. Yeah. Uh, but uh, after uh, drinking hydrogen water for a long time, um, the mice become slim. <laughs> okay. <Yeah>. So, <laughs> uh, and also, we measure the energy metabolism. And that is a um, phenomenon. It's not mechanism. So I continue to find the mechanism. Okay, so, so in that publication, you found this is the phenomena yeah. that you're seeing increases in FGF21. Mm -hmm. You see increase in energy expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, I, that same article, they showed that uh, drinking hydrogen-rich water had a similar effect to, was it a 15 or 20% caloric restriction? Yeah, in, right. in, 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 the, in the animals, right? Yeah. And uh, since I give a presentation and I, and I show the animals that are mm -hmm. in, the, 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 the two mice that are in the, yeah. on the slide, 
And I say, you know, these two mice, they were, they grew up together, they did everything together, yeah. but one drank hygiene water and mm. one did not. And, yeah. and the effects are very clear. It's yeah. very surprising. Mm. And, and then later, mm. you did the studies to figure out the mechanism yeah. to explain this phenomenon. Yeah. yeah. So it's important to find the mechanism because uh, uh, nobody believes the effect. Right. Without the mechanism. Right, right. We need that in vitro data. Yeah. We need to understand, you know, yeah. hygiene as the as what is the target, yeah. where is it working at. Mm. And, and that's critical as well because when we want to look at dosing protocols and different diseases and for who hygiene will be or, or perhaps will not be effective, um, we need to understand those in vitro mechanisms. Mm. Uh, but th these are animal studies that we talked about here. What are some of the human studies that kind okay, of corroborate yeah. so some of the anti obesity important. effects? So I'm a basic uh, scientist. I can't do by myself, but I can help the clinicians. And uh, also uh, we um, are applying to hydrogen gas uh, for patients uh, with cerebral infarction. Okay. We recently we published a paper on cerebral infarction and uh, that is a randomized clinical studies. And uh, so that was a recent publication, just a, yeah. a few couple months ago. Yes, yes, uh, one month. <laughs> okay, just one month, just one month ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and the subject is uh, uh, fifty. Fifty subjects, yeah. double blinded, placebo controlled, randomized. Oh, study. Yeah, actually, it's not. Uh, Double blind. It's not, oh, but, so it's open label, but 50 people. Uh, no, uh, f I, I mean that that is a randomized, uh, but it's not blind for doctors. Oh, sure, for doctors. sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And th this is, this is, yeah, there's yeah, a good yeah. reason for that. Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, go okay, ahead. Okay, and, uh, but uh, it's you know, not so bad uh, because it's a, the important is a randomized study. Yeah. And even if the doctors know and uh, it, this is a hydrogen gas or this is not. Uh, but uh, um, for the blood examination, and uh, that is randomized. Sure. Uh, and for the, and the effect for tri uh, rehabilitation effect, uh, that is uh, blind. So what, some, what were some, some of, of them? Them, Some of them is blind, some of them is not blind. I see. Uh, I mean the, the doctor knows uh, which is uh, the Placebo and yeah, so sing, single is, blind you know, yeah. on, on okay. parts of it. Yeah. So uh, I would say it's blind but not complete blind. Right. Okay. So and uh, it's not placebo but uh, the approved medicine. Okay. You, yeah, yeah, explain yeah. this. So okay, 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 yeah, explain. explain. This okay, is very, this very is like groundbreaking. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So and, and that is uh, experiment uh, uh, that is study. And for the um, half of them, uh, that is uh, 25 patients, inhaled hydrogen gas. And doctors applied the uh, approved medical, doc medical drug for 25 uh, patients. So that is a comparison of the hydrogen gas and approved um, medical uh, drugs. Yeah, the, do, so, do you get that? So you have an approved medical drug that's mm. being compared head to head yeah. with inhalation mm. of hydrogen gas mm. to 2%? Yes, 3%. Uh, 3%. 3%. Okay, 3% hydrogen. hydrogen. And remember, hydrogen is not flammable when it's below a 4.6% yeah, yeah, concentration. Right. So yeah. we're not running the risk of blowing up mm. the Japanese yeah. hospital or something. Yeah. Okay, so and the result of the hydrogen gas is much uh, better than that uh, one of the, then the approved, uh, approved uh, me medical, uh, medical drug and uh, as uh, judged by clinical phenotype, uh, symptom and the effect for rehabilitation, all of them. So it was surprised. Yeah, that's a uh, very su that's a very surprising effect. Yeah. And and now they're doing a very large yeah. clinical trial. The Japanese government recently approved in December, I believe, uh, yeah. uh, hydrogen inhalation as an official medical procedure for mm. post cardiac arrest patients. Yeah. And uh, that is uh, another story, and uh, they uh, they uh, are trying to apply the hydrogen gas for. 360 patients, 360 patients with a cardiac arrest, post-syndrome. Because normally they do a hypothermia, in, in, uh, yeah. right? 
So can, can you explain what, why they would do a hypothermia or when the effects of this hydrogen gas, what the idea is? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, because uh, we performed uh, several um, animal experiments and we found the hydrogen gas protect the brain. Right. And usually after the cardiac arrest. So if after you have a heart there, attack. Yes, yeah. It is difficult to protect the brain. Right, because when you start the blood to go back to the brain, yeah. you cause a lot of damage. So hydrogen has only one advantage. Uh, I mean, the hydrogen is very good for uh, survive the patient, but and uh, protect the brain. To help, uh, help to, to make the patient survive longer, oh yeah, as well I'll, as to I'll, protect the brain. So yeah, it's kind of a, a, yeah. a two-pronged yeah. benefit. Yeah. Uh, that is just on the way, but uh, that the huge clinical studies, uh, the, the target of the patient number is 360. Yeah, yeah. By uh, uh, 20 hospitals. Yeah, and these are very reputable hospitals like Ki Kiyo yeah. University. Uh, Kiyo University is a Keio University. Keio, Keio, Keio University. University. Ah, yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and another story that is uh, acute disease. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, we are trying to get a good result by uh, for the chronic uh, disease, for the rheumatism and Parkinson's disease and dementia. And and we and already there is the the double blind and placebo controlled randomized study. It was yeah. small, maybe twenty see, patients yes, or something yes. on on rheumatoid uh, arthritis. Uh, uh, no, no, uh, seventeen patients. Seventeen. Okay, seven, almost okay. twenty. Seventeen. And now uh, they are trying to uh, um, clinical study. Um, target is uh, 186. 186? Yeah. That would be great. Th this yeah. study, you can go back and read it 2012, 2013, 2014, around that mm. time period. There's a couple of uh, publications mm. in the same area with rheumatoid arthritis, but it was very powerful. In fact, some of the uh, subjects who are drinking hydrogen rich water went under remission of the disease that really help decrease the inflammation and the C-reactive protein and another number of other uh, biomarkers of the disease. Yeah, and the potential of hydrogen water is uh, you know, to improve the T-scam, uh, how to say, gum. The, the, oh, the gum. Gum. Yeah, yeah. The, like the gingivitis yeah. and, and the, yeah, the, okay. Yeah. So, so um, a scientist and the medical doctor performed a lot of study, yeah. Yeah. So um, the target of the disease is so much. So, so many so different many. diseases. Yeah. I, I've always said that most diseases um, have two problems. Mm. Uh, one of them is uh, a redox dysregulation. Mm. And redox dysregulation mm. is, a, is a term I often use to explain that you can have free radicals. Remember, there's the good and mm. there's bad. Mm. You need a balance. And there's antioxidants. There's, you, can, you can actually get too many antioxidants, mm. right? So you want to have a good balance between oxidation mm. and reduction. And that oxidation reduction is, is called redox. And so this is, when you have a redox dysregulation, that sets up for diseases. Mm, yeah. So there's a redox dysregulation as well as a dysregulation of inflammation. Because mm. we also need basal levels of inflammation. And if we have too much, then we have all these diseases. Mm. If we don't have enough, then we're going to get sick easy, we're not going to heal, we actually don't improve better when we exercise. So we need some basal inflammation, but if we have a dysregulation, then we can get all these diseases. Mm -hmm. So we have two main root causes, a, a dysregulation in, in the redox mm -hmm. and inflammation. Mm -hmm, yeah. And would you agree, hydrogen... Yes, yes, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hydrogen appears to help both of these things. Yeah, It's kind of this, you know... Uh, it's very curious when, when, you, when you look at hydrogen from, from uh, the billions of years ago. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and uh, I see what you think about this, this idea I've been thinking um, for, the, for the past few years. I, I presented at a conference in Beijing mm -hmm. uh, about the why of hydrogen having an effect. Because we don't really know the mechanisms. We, we don't oh, know yeah. all the primary targets of hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. So we don't, we, we don't know what exactly is going on. Mm. We, we do see uh, that it's working, mm. but we don't know exactly what. But then I thought to myself, is there a potential explanation of, of why? Why would hydrogen have a beneficial effect? 
And it goes oh, back can... to the mitochondria, yeah. which is your expertise, yeah. right? Because okay. so maybe we can talk about this a little bit of you know the hydrogenases, yeah. the hydrogenosomes, yeah. and and maybe some of that 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 relationship way back from the beginning with the eukaryotes and the prokaryotes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that is uh, only still imagination. Yes, it's still uh, imagination. Okay, it's, okay. Yeah. And and uh, still ancestor, theory. Yeah. Ancestor of mitochondria um, use hydrogen as an energy source. As an energy source, so they would actually take hydrogen, mm. extract the electrons, and use that for their food. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, no. I, I'm sorry. Uh, provide hydrogen. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we have two uh, yeah. things. We have energy that metabolizes uh, hydrogen. And energy that, that produce okay. hydrogen. Aki, uh, aki, uh, uh, such kind of metal or uh, bacteria uh, that produce the uh, metal for getting uh, energy right. by using hydrogen and uh, CO2. Uh, CO2 can be dissolved in a higher concentration, uh, but it is difficult to catch hydrogen. Uh, but one of the small uh, bacteria uh, produce hydrogen. And then Akia catch the uh, bacteria that produce hydrogen, and that uh, the bacteria become mitochondria. That is my uh, maybe uh, a the theory. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. endosymbiotic yeah. type theory, right? Yeah. Where we have uh, hydrogen is being produced, mm. and as as the end product gets produced, we start to slow down metabolism, mm. and so we have this other bacteria yeah. that comes along, and or the archaea, right? Yeah gets that hydrogen gas, opens its mouth, and is able to consume mm. the hydrogen gas, and now the metabolism can continue going. So um, in that case, hydrogen is the, is the final electron receptor, yeah. um, and it's able to continue. Uh, yeah. So there's that interesting relationship going back uh, yeah. to the mitochondria, yeah, yeah. which we, we, we have in our body. That's the energy source. Yes, yes, that's right. And, you know, it's also interesting because um, you know, life, we don't know exactly where life started, but mm. a lot of the, the theory and the evidence suggests that mm. life started deep in the oceans in mm. those deep sea hydrothermal vents. Mm. And hydrogen gas was being produced there. Mm. And hydrogen gas could have served as the first energy source yeah. for life. So we have mm. the first prokaryotes yeah. that, that used hydrogen as an energy source. Mm. And so now we have prokaryotes, those, those, you know, like bacteria, mm. and then we have plant animal cells which mm. are called eukaryotes, mm. right? And it's interesting, there was an article published in uh, 1999 in the Journal of Science that talked about how hydrogen mm. was the key to forge eukaryotes out of prokaryotes. Oh, yes, that's it, right. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Right? That is uh, exactly the same. Okay. So, yeah. It's very fascinating. The hydrogen that has been involved, even before that, right, when the, the, when the Big Bang started, mm. Hydrogen is considered the father of the elements. Yeah. It, it started everything. Yeah. And, and then now, then life comes. Yeah. Hydrogen was what it was the genesis of life, yeah. right? And, and then it's, the, it's involved in the evolution of life mm. from the, the emergence of the eukaryotes from the prokaryotes. Mm. And it's always been there. Mm. And then what about our intestinal bacteria? Uh, in, intestinal bacteria? Our intestinal oh, bacteria yeah, yeah. with hydrogen. Yes, yes. Uh, and the mammalian cells cannot uh, produce hydrogen yeah, and so, cannot use right. the hydrogen as an energy source. Uh, but the intestinal bacteria produce hydrogen. And uh, um, maybe the uh, hydrogen from the intestinal bacteria is effective, but not so strong. Yeah. And uh, someone compared the effect uh, between the drinking hydrogen gas and the hydrogen uh, produced by a bacteria. And the effect of drinking hydrogen water is much more than right, right. Uh, and, uh, hydrogen from bacteria. Yeah, th this is very, yeah, that was Dr. Ono yeah. um, and, and with the Parkinson's disease model. Um, yeah. He's also one of our MHF advisors. Um, but this is very curious, if we just go back quickly to the the fact that we've always been exposed to hydrogen from, yes, from the yes. very beginning, yeah. and then and then like you said, our, mm. our, our cells we, we cannot produce hydrogen gas, and our cells don't actually use hydrogen gas as an energy source. But we've always been exposed to it from from the very beginning. Then we've developed this symbiotic relationship with our intestinal flora, and that bacteria has continued to produce hydrogen gas. So it's always been present. It has there's basal levels in our blood and our breath. And so it is therapeutic. There was a research article from uh, the Foresight Institute in Boston, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, and University of Florida, where they did a uh, gene knockout study, 
Mm. And they showed that hydrogen gas yeah. produced from the bacteria, from the E. coli, mm. was therapeutic mm. from a hepatotoxin mm. or liver toxin. Um, but then we just talked about mm. here that, that maybe hydrogen gas <coughs> from drinking hydrogen rich yeah. water yeah. It is, is more effective. Epic. That's right. Yeah. Than, now, now, this is curious though, because when you look at how much hydrogen gas is produced from bacteria, I mean, we're talking of, you know, liters of hydrogen gas. Oh, yeah. Versus the, the amount of hydrogen gas that produ uh, the bacteria produces is about 100 times or so. Yeah. Uh, but in my opinion, the, that the important thing is the change of the concentration of hydrogen. And uh, from the hydrogen, uh, from bacteria, um, the near concentration near the uh, constant. So uh, that is why yeah. uh, drinking hydrogen water is still shows an so effect. Yeah. This is a critical, and this is common in, in a lot of uh, signal modulating or, or, mm. or cell signal modulators, mm. um, is the fact that if there's a continuous base of levels, then we have a habituation or attenuation mm. of mm. that signal. So there's always this hydrogen gas in the body at constant exposure all the time. The, the level is pretty much mm. all the same. So our body kind of gets used to that, our cells do. And then when we drink hydrogen-rich water or inhale hydrogen gas a, a whole bunch uh, really quickly, then we get this tangent, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's this pulse type effect is what oh, yeah. causes the cells, that the cell modulation to occur. Yeah. And that's one of the ways that we can explain the reason that yeah. drinking hydrogen-rich water yeah. is, is more effective than just getting it from the bacteria. Yes, yes. And so I, I, I told you in the initial stage, and uh, hydrogen water is m much more effective than inhalation of hydrogen gas. And uh, for the chronic studies, I use a uh, box uh, for inhalation of hydrogen gas. And mice live in a box with hydrogen gas. Okay, so you have uh, the, the box connected to hydrogen gas yes, yes. and uh, about 2 to 4 percent? 2 percent of hydrogen gas. Okay. So the mice continuously inhaled hydrogen gas at the same concentration of hydrogen gas. 24-7? Yeah, almost. Um, all um, the time? All the time, all the time. Uh, for example, one month or... Right, something. right. But every day, every it was day. just always there, constantly exposed. Yeah. And it, in that time, um, the effect disappeared. It disappeared? Yeah. So I uh, changed the uh, 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 experiment to drink hydrogen water. So we can compare the uh, effect of hydrogen water and the hydrogen gas at the same time, at the initial stage. Right. So I think that we must change the uh, thinking. Our paradigm. Now, now, is this the study actually that, that you also published in, I think, 2008 with the polio protein mm. E knockout mice? Yeah. And so, so they had this, this gene mutation that developed mm. atherosclerosis very quickly. Mm. And when, when the mice drank hydrogen-rich water, mm. it, it prevented the development of atherosclerosis. Mm. Is, is, this, is this right? Yes, that's right, yeah. So, and, and but when you found with the inhalation, the constant mm. continuous exposure, it, mm. it, the, the, you, maybe you saw some marginal effect mm. at, at, at the beginning, mm. in the initial stage, mm. and then it kind of disappeared. Yeah, yeah. But by the drinking hydrogen-rich water, yeah. You, yeah. You, you saw throughout yeah. the study. Yeah. Which would make sense, I guess, because when you drink hydrogen water, even though it's every day, right? Mm. Constantly drinking every day, but it's still intermittent exposure because mm. you drink it, you know, yeah. once or a few times yeah. a day. Um, let's talk about the pharmacokinetics of hydrogen mm. then. Um, when we drink uh, hydrogen-rich water, about mm. 500 milliliters, mm. you know, what, what, how, how long until it actually gets into our blood and, and things? And it takes a very short time. And without the ten, uh, 10 to 20 minutes, um, uh, we in, um, consume the hydrogen after drinking. Okay, so after about 10 or 20 minutes or so, yeah. we drink the hydrogen, we start to see, we, we yeah. already see levels, the peak level in the blood, yeah, yeah. as well as in the breath. And for the, yes, at 20 or 30 minutes or so, yeah. yeah. And, and, and then how long does the hydrogen stay in the body before it's pretty about, much you excel it out? About uh, one hour. About one hour. one hour. So so you can see the line, it peaks around 
it depends on how much you how much the dose you ingest, mm -hmm. but it can peak anywhere between five to to twenty minutes or so. It'll have a peak, and then it's going to go back to baseline in about an hour. Yeah, and this would also help support the idea that it has more to do with uh, modulating signal transduction yeah. than it does as a, as a oh, hands, yes, you know, yes, scavenging yes, a free yeah. radical or something, right? But this is interesting because uh, hydrogen gas uh, modulating signal transduction. Hydrogen is a gas, though. I mean, mm. it, it's not a transcription factor. It's not yeah. a, uh, a drug that does these things. Yeah. How do, if we compare this to other gases, mm. such as the nitric oxide, yeah. right? Mm. This would be a fun, a fun little thing because nitric oxide is also a gas. Mm. When it was first thought that this this uh, thing was called endothelial re releasing yeah. factor mm. or re mm. relaxing factor, mm. uh, and it was suggested it was a gas that was doing this, mm. and the people were, were laughed at, right? Yeah. They they thought no no it can't, gases can't do this, yeah. and then later they found yeah. it was nitric yeah. oxide. It is a gas and it is having this effect. Yeah. Um, wh what are some of your thoughts on hydrogen? being a signal modulator as a gas compared to other signal modulators. Oh yeah, so and uh, other gas is uh, rather active, right? not so stable. Like nitric uh, oxide yeah. is yes. a free radical, yeah. right? Yeah. Very yeah. short half-life. Yeah, so and hydrogen is uh, essentially in that. Essentially. So <laughs> and it's not easy to react with other uh, uh, components. Right. Yeah, so I think the hydrogen uh, can disturb the free radical chain reaction. Yeah. That is my idea. And also, the modulation of free radical chain reaction produce uh, uh, lipid mediators. Yeah, the lipid yeah. mediators, which yeah. Medi and alter calcium medi signaling. Yeah. Yes, that's right, one of them. Right. And this is, it's interesting, like, as you said, because hydrogen, because it's just neutral, it's non-polar mm. like this, versus nitric oxide, mm. it, it is polar, mm. it's a free radical, very short half life. Mm. And other gases like hydrogen sulfide are mm. very non-polar, yeah. and it, it as a signal mm. modulator. Mm. And then there's carbon monoxide, also a signal modulator, mm. uh, very, very polar as well. Mm. But hydrogen gas is, is, is neutral mm. and non-polar, yeah, so yeah. It's, it is very strange. So I guess technically speaking, yeah. according to the definitions of gas signal modulators, hydrogen mm. cannot be considered a, a, a signal modulator mm. uh, technically because mm. I, I think some of the criteria, for example, it needs to be produced by the actual mammalian cells, mm. right? And hydrogen gas is not, mm. uh, but yet it still has this uh, yeah. <laughs> this effect on signal. So it's a difficult to explain the effect. Yeah. 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 So w going back to energy metabolism, mm -hmm. um, w w increasing PGC one alpha mm -hmm. mitochondria biogenesis, mm -hmm. um, and the fact that I'm going to tie this into exercise and 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 performance and things mm -hmm. is what I want to do. But mm -hmm. to, to kind of set the stage a little mm -hmm. bit, when we look at uh, exercise, we produce more mm -hmm. free radicals. Yeah. We're breathing more, yeah, so yeah. by default, we'll produce more mm -hmm. free radicals. And these free radicals, uh, reactive oxygen species, have been shown to actually mediate some of the benefits of exercise. Yeah. They actually activate transcription yeah, yeah. factors mm -hmm. and cause these benefits. Yeah. And, and, and some of the human studies have shown that by taking high doses of antioxidants mm -hmm. uh, chronically during training can actually, actually negate yeah. or abolish the benefits of exercise training, yeah, yeah, yeah. perhaps because it's neutralizing those beneficial free yeah. radicals. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about hydrogen, hydrogen is a selective antioxidant. Yeah, it right. only neutralizes the bad ones, yeah. and, it'll, and, and it'll keep the good ones. And it also has that enhancing effect at enhancing things like PGC1-alpha. Mm. So it makes a lot of sense that hydrogen could be great for, for athletes, for, for, for sports. Yeah, but, I think so. Okay, I just recently did a study, mm. a, a double-blind mm. placebo mm. controlled trial mm. on, on hydrogen and mm. athletes, and I know you're doing this as well, but what are some of the, the, the findings that you've seen um, and, and they were already published, like uh, uh, the one on, on elite soccer players, yeah. for example. Well, what are your uh, thoughts on okay, hydrogen? Okay. And uh, we made the uh, um, uh, maximum oxide, uh, maximum uh, oxygen, oxygen consumption. consumption. VO2 max. Yeah, yeah, by bicycle. And we compared the before and after drinking hydrogen water. Okay, at first we uh, asked the uh, uh, volunteer to uh, uh, um, perform the biking, uh, yeah, bicycle. The bicycle, to get a baseline. Yeah, uh, and uh, we take a baseline. And after drinking and 
uh, after one week, we uh, performed the same uh, ex experiment. And we compared the difference. And also, we uh, used uh, placebo water. And the placebo water uh, did not um, change at all. Did not change the baseline. Yeah. Uh, but after the drink of hydrogen water, the maximum oxygen consumption increased. Increased. That, uh, to me, that's very surprising because, mm. you know, um, VO2 max is difficult to improve. Mm. In fact, if you look at the elite athletes, for example, they'll train for years mm. and their performance will continue to get better and better, but their VO2 max will stay the same. And that's because they improve running economy, for example, or different things. They don't really improve VO2 max. So to suggest that mm. we're actually improving VO2 max mm. in, in this population, because mm. it may not work so well for healthy populations mm. um, that don't have mm. issues, which, which were, we, we discussed earlier. Mm. But the, the fact that we can change that to increase mm. that is very, very powerful. Mm. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people are, are talk about the, the lactate, or people call incorrect uh, lactic yeah, acid. Yeah. You can go ahead. Okay, another group uh, um, examined the uh, blood lactate after the exercise. Yeah, this is elite uh, soccer players. Yeah. And also, uh, hydrogen suppresses the increase of lactate in blood. Yeah. So, so people, people sometimes don't understand the significance of this. They think, mm. oh yeah, because now we don't have the lactate and that causes fatigue. Mm. But we know that's not true. Mm -hmm. Lactate actually prevents fatigue, it actually prevents acidosis. Mm. And what really happens is it's a correlation. When you start to get fatigued or tired, then you start to rely on glycolysis and that's when you start producing mm. the lactate. And what happens is the hydrogen somehow, may maybe it's able to help mitochondrial function. Yes, I that, think so, yeah. Um, because then the prevents the lactate, lactate production. Um, is the result of glycolysis. Of glycolysis. So after the drink of hydrogen water, the metabolism um, change from the glycolysis of, of to uh, repeat uh, fatty acid metabolism. Right, which mm. kind of corroborates with mm. your earlier study, mm. which is increasing energy expenditure mm. and, and, and mm, things. Yeah. So it, it, all, it all starts coming together. And that's the other thing I mentioned earlier that it seems that hydrogen mimics the benefits of fasting, of caloric restriction. Mm. But it also seems that hydrogen mimics the benefits of exercise. Yes, yes, that's, that's right. So <laughs> it's uh, also a curious story. So. Yes, and, and, it, and it's very strange because some of the studies we actually see that hydrogen can transiently increase mm. free radical production, mm. like superoxide mm. and the mitochondrial, yeah. right? And, and, then, and then we have the enhanced effect of, of the NRF2 factor. Mm. Could you explain a little bit about the, the NRF2, uh, hydrogen's effect on, on NRF2 and the increased glutathione? Ah, uh, yes, yeah. Um, the usually, uh, oxidative stress increases uh, NRF2, uh, uh, which uh, is uh, one of the transcription factors and transcribes the antioxidant enzymes. Right. So, if the NRF2 is increased or activated, the, uh, and that function antioxidation. Uh, but hydrogen uh, decreases oxidative stress, but Increase the uh, activity of NAV2. So that is opposite. Yeah, yeah. Very, it's almost a paradox, mm, yeah. right? Yeah, paradox. Where, where, yeah. where hydrogen is a reducing agent, mm. it's going to reduce oxidative distress, but at the same time, it can activate this mm. NR2 pathway. And, mm. and maybe it's via this transient increase in superoxide production. We're not sure all the mechanisms, but they're being investigated. Yeah. But, but that's huge because you know, from, from perhaps aging or, or different diseases, our mm. levels of, say, glutathione mm. or superoxide just mutase, glutathione peroxidase, right, th these start to decrease. Mm. And administration of hydrogen mm. can, can get those levels back up. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes. But, but this, is, this is, you know, something else to consider, uh, Dr. Ota, is uh, we need to have a certain level of glutathione. Mm. If it goes low, that's bad. But if we get too high, mm. the glutathione levels go too high, mm. that could be a reductive stress. Mm. Um, it, it's so I think you've also seen that hydrogen, it, it, if you administer hydrogen to a healthy person or a healthy animal or a healthy mm. cell, mm. that the glutathione levels are already mm. normal, mm. you don't see the increase in glutathione. It, yeah, it, it, in my opinion, in my opinion, okay, um, um, hydrogen uh, lead to normal stage, yeah. uh, but not increase. Yeah. If we drink hydrogen water, 
uh, when the stress decreases the um, ability of memory, hydrogen recovers the memory ability, but maybe will not increase the memory ability. Right, right. Yeah. So that's so stress. So I've reviewed pretty much, you know, th there's nearly a thousand publications yeah. now on hydrogen. Oh. And I've reviewed all of these, and I've seen the same thing that hydrogen really helps to bring things back to homeostasis. Yeah. It, it doesn't increase things too much or, or decrease things. Mm. It's, it's not really powerful, mm. but has multiple functions. Yeah, okay. Bring back uh, to yeah, homeostasis. Okay. Also, uh, we um, apply the hydrogen water to DBDB mass. And uh, DBDB mass, PGC1 for increase. But for the normal mass, PGC one alpha did not decrease. So the no, 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 no decrease and not de increase. So there's no, no change. change. So normal for the normal one is uh, no effect uh, by it's hydrogen water. And this is this probably helps to explain why, uh, like myself, mm. I, I you know I exercise mm. you know, every day. I, I I lift weights. I train. Mm. I run marathons. I do the different things. And when I take hydrogen, I. I don't notice anything. Oh yeah, <laughs> you are healthy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and I think a, a lot of people give this feedback, yeah. but you know this is kind of anecdotal. Mm. But but I do hear so many people mm. that w who are maybe you know in their forties, fifties, sixties, and they take hydrogen mm. and they report these dramatic effects. Mm. And I just think, oh wow, that's a strong placebo effect. Mm. Oh, yeah. But but maybe it's because they're so far out of homeostasis yeah. that hydrogen has an, a greater mm. effect mm. when you're further from homeostasis, but if mm. you're, you're healthy, mm. you, you may not notice as yeah. much. Uh, but uh, for the chronic uh, disease, it takes a long time. Uh, for example, for dementia, it takes uh, 40 years to uh, onset dementia. And, uh, depend, and also, the dementia depends on the genetic type. Yeah. So, uh, that, uh, in a specific genetic type, it is healthy, but has a cause in a body. So um, for the dementia or the cancer or the atherosclerosis, it takes a long time to, to develop. develop. So that is uh, important for the prevention. Of okay, so that's my next question. So let's say uh, that you have people who are healthy. Yeah. They don't have these diseases. Yeah. Would it be advisable for them to to perhaps try the hydrogen mm. and use it to perhaps uh, prolong or prevent yeah. the, this mm. this disease that they may yeah. be genetically mm. uh, inclined to have? Okay, um, at least in animal experiment, um, hydrogen has a much more role in preventing. Prevent so it's a better preventive than yes. than a cure uh, because. Uh, Pre-treatment of hydrogen water is much more effective than post-treatment. Post -treatment. Yeah. That uh, suggests uh, hydrogen shows a good role in prevention. Right, right. So people who are health conscious, yeah. um, maybe it's a great idea to, to try the hydrogen mm. um, so they can maybe have some prevention. Yeah. But really though, we, we need more clinical data. Mm. We, I mean, yes, hydrogen yes, is still yes. in its infancy. We, we yeah. can't make claims saying, oh, hydrogen is going to do mm. this and this and this. We, we, have, we have promising preliminary data and some pretty mm. neat human studies, but mm. we need more data. So the real question is this. We, I, my, in my opinion, mm. we have enough data to suggest it, it, is, it has the therapeutic potential. Mm. So it, it is advisable to try. Mm. But, but remember, um, the, the, the most important is do no harm, mm. right? So, so the yeah, safety yeah. of hydrogen. Mm. What, well, we, we've already talked about hydrogen is very natural to our mm. bodies. It's the most mm. natural thing. Mm. I mean, we, we produce it by intestinal bacteria. Mm. But uh, what, what do you think of the safety of hydrogen? E even though, my question is, even though there's maybe not, you know, hundreds and hundreds of uh, clinical trials that last 10 years yeah. and everything mm. to really show the, how hydrogen's effect, we have enough data showing it does have beneficial effect, mm. but do we have enough data also showing that it is safe, that we can mm. go ahead and start taking the hydrogen mm. Mm. now? Yeah, at least uh, we couldn't find any adverse effect after drinking hydrogen water. But uh, still we are afraid of the side effect of hydrogen water. Yeah. So we must be uh, sensitive uh, to the adverse effect. 
I think that's a good good way to put it, right? We we haven't found. We're not saying there are no side effects. Yeah. We're saying we have not found mm. any side effects, and we've th- we've done a lot of studies. There mm. really is a lot of animal studies, cell studies, mm. uh, quite a number of human mm. studies with no reports mm. of of adverse effects, mm. and so it does seem to be very very uh, safe. And mm. and we also know it, it's it's natural from our intestinal bacteria, mm. right? We're exposed to it all the time. Every mm. time we we, we eat our, our diet of fiber, for example, we get mm. more mm. of the hydrogen gas. And, and actually, the, the deep sea diving, right? The d- deep sea divers. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Since the 1940s, they've been yeah. using hydrogen at literally millions of times higher concentrations mm. than what we use for, for medical use, mm. with, with again, no chronic or toxic effects. Yeah, that's right.